Sergeant Jones, could you please lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for December 17th. The first thing, we have a presentation of awards from the New Hampshire Employer Support for Guard and Reserve, the NHESGR. <laughs> Gentlemen. Right. Thank, you. thank you, and thank you for allowing us to come and interrupt your meeting today. Uh, just a little bit of history about what we do. Can we speak a little bit closer to the mic? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Over here. Yeah. Can hear me? Okay. The, the, the nice uh, listeners at home want to hear. Oh, I see. Uh, just a little bit of history about ESGR. How many people here have ever heard of ESGR? Not uncommon. Yeah, a couple of people. Uh, founded in around 1972 when the all-volunteer service started and the draft ended uh, for obvious reasons to help our servicemen and women that are in the Guard Reserve with coming back from their duties and their training. Uh, we uh, actually do mediation, uh, recognition of awards, and education. Uh, part of what we do is go out and educate the military uh, guard and reserve members about their rights under USERA, and we want to make sure that they're playing nicely with their employer. So we, we also do that too. Uh, <laughs> if there is a conflict, it, it is a free service that we provide to the service member and to the employer. Uh, we're probably the most cost-effective part of the Department of Defense. We're all volunteers. So most of us are retired military as well. But uh, we also do, if they, there is a conflict, 99% uh, of the time we'll resolve it. If it doesn't get resolved by us, it goes on to the U.S. Department of Labor. Wow. Then they will resolve the problem from there. Uh, also, we go out and do briefings at the units with the Guard and Reserve just to let them know what their rights and responsibilities are. We also do uh, recognition, and that's one of the reasons why we're here today. Uh, how many people here know what percentage of our population actually serves in our military today? Uh, Any idea? Less than one. Less than one percent. Wow. Oh, wow. Half a percent. And that includes the Guard Reserve. Ooh. World War II, we we're around 27, 28 percent. Vietnam is around 15, 16 percent. So you can see how important it is to keep uh, communications between an employer uh, and the service member and their families. Because what will happen is it is critical that we keep people such as Mr. Delato in, or in the service because if once he leaves, not only does he leave, but a lot of experience walks out the door with it. And as it does the same thing here with the chief too in the, your department. So it's very important to keep them in the service, and that's why we want to do is recognize employers for their outstanding service. Because if a family member has a problem, or the employer has a problem, who's, what's going to happen? They're going to leave the service. So that means that percentage just went down below a, a half a percent. So it's very important to do that. So we thank the chief and the department for the, cert the support that you give to uh, Sergeant Delato uh, is very important and we appreciate that. And a couple of the awards that we have today, we're going to have Mike Walzak present them. We have two Patriot Awards and Above and Beyond Award and we also have a statement of support. Uh, the Above and Beyond Award you didn't know was coming. No. <laughs> that's why it's called Above and Beyond. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is a particular uh, an award that you could nominate your department for, but also as a chair for the state of New Hampshire, I can also nominate an employer as well. So I did that for the outstanding support that you guys gave me. All yours, Mike. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have, have a seat. Make yourself comfy so they can hear you. Okay. We'll do. I'm just trying well, to get taller. <laughs> well, I'll stand Not up in a minute, but what I would like to do is to have both uh, Sergeant Jones and Chief Sawyer come up here. They're both going to receive what is called 
a, uh, a Patriot Award. And I think the best way to describe it is just to read right off it here because it's really short and sweet and simple and <laughs> to the point. And it says that it is recognizing both uh, Sergeant Jones and Chief Sawyer as patriotic employers for contributing to national security and protecting liberty and freedom by supporting employee participation in America's National Guard and Reserve Force. Amen. And it's from the Secretary of Defense. Chief. I'd also like to ask Deputy Chief Hobbs to step up and, um, and to accept this award, the Above and Beyond Award, on behalf of the Hampton Police Department. And I'm going to read this off again because it gets right to the point. Uh, employer Support of the Guard and Reserve presents this Above and Beyond Award to the Hampton Police Department, Hampton, New Hampshire, presented on behalf of the men and women of the National Guard and Reserve Forces for outstanding service and continuing support to national defense. The Above and Beyond Award recognizes that your department and your police force is going beyond what the legal requirements are. There is a mm -hmm. law that governs a relationship between employers. civilian employers and their guardsmen and reservists. Yeah. When you go above and beyond that, it tells us that you really are serious about supporting our fighting forces. And that's what this award recognizes. Oh. Dave. <laughs> Last, Last but not least, we will get the chief to sign the statement of support, and hopefully you'll sh display that prominently within the department. And that you is yours to keep. Yeah, that's the coveted ESJR 8-pack. Yes. This particular uh, statement of support is signed by our national chair, my boss, but also by the Secretary of Defense, which is uh, Mad Dog Maddox. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> for you. That's for you. <laughs> and two Patriot pins. Oh, thank you very much. Gentlemen, all the way from Robert, all the way through the department, thank you all for your continuing support. It is absolutely critical for the defense of this country. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for allowing us to be part of your program. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for coming thank in you. tonight. Yeah. But now you nice gentlemen are not going to send them down to build the wall. No, not that I'm aware of. I, we can't do that anyhow. That would have to be the Secretary of Defense on the front. Just saying here. I'm in that video. I don't think I should be in the And our combat engineers are going to go later. Again, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next we have our public comment period. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? Page four buried someplace that Unitel will be taking shutting power off in various locations for two hours during the winter time to upgrade their system. I appreciate the upgrading of the system, but I'd like to know who approved the two hours that I'm going to lose the heat. Thank you very much. That's a good point. Ooh. A real good point. And we can probably check on that. Any other? Yeah, especially in the winter. Any other public comments? Seeing none, announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Uh, nothing that I can think of at the moment. Regina? Uh, no, this is our last meeting before Christmas, so Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, same. Ditto. Uh, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, <laughs> and Happy New Year, and just hope everybody stays safe, please, during the holidays. Absolutely. Let's make it a, a safe holiday and... Uh, you know, let's 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 keep, you know, the the cheer out there, and, and uh, let's not have any issues that we have to deal with, which would be great. Approval of minutes, November twenty six. I will so move. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor? 
Unanimous. November, uh, December 3rd, non-public and public session. I'll make the motion. I think I was not at the non-public. I'll second it. That's the one I was not at the non-public. Okay. So I'll abstain on the 13th. Okay. I mean on the 3rd, I'm sorry. But oh. I'll do the public oh. session. All right. All those in favor? Non-public, right. Non-public? And now I'll also move the public okay. session. So you abstain from the non-public yeah. session. Okay. okay. And I'll second the non-public, the public session. I'm sorry. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Alrighty. Uh, just for, I'd be sure to mention, Rick is out tonight. He is home recovering, and uh, we wish him well. Uh, I'm sure he's out there listening to us, but he couldn't make it in tonight, so we uh, we wish him well and a speedy recovery. Consent agenda. We have a uh, cemetery deeds. We have the 2019 veterans credits. We have a release of notice of lien. We have two releases of notice of liens. We have the 2018 equalization ratio primary report, preliminary mm -hmm. report. Yeah. We have the 2018 supplemental real estate property tax warrant. We have a parade and gathering license for Smutty Nose. And Eastern States 20 miles. And Eastern States and 20 miles, right. Fest. And Seafood Fest 5K. Yep. Yeah. Also move that we accept the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one we have up is uh, Chris Jacobs, DP, DPW Director, and Jen Hale, Deputy Director. item I believe we're up for is uh, a number of uh, bid awards or bid recommendations. Uh, the other items I know that we're up for or that I'm here for uh, would be any last minute revisions or reviews to warrant articles, but I do understand that that's later in the meeting. So with that, I'll turn it to Jen. Uh, this evening uh, before you are three separate bids that went out uh, related to chemicals for the operation of our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, they were bids for ketonic polymer, uh, bids for sodium hypochlorite, and a bid for sodium bisulfite. Um, if we start with the sodium bisulfite one, uh, I'm asking the board to um, authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with PVS Chemical Solutions, Inc for a duration of two years, beginning January 1st, 2019 through December 30th, 2020. This is for the sodium bisulfite. The bid was put out, sent to vendors, and does conform with the Town of Hampton purchasing policy. Any Three questions? bidders no. did reply. Any I'll, questions? I'll be happy to move that we approve of that. Motion. I'll second it. Second, all those in favor, unanimous. The next one is for our ketonic polymer. Uh, we are recommending that the Board of Selectmen authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with Coin Chemical Company for a duration from January 1st, 2019 through December 30th, 2020. Uh, this recommendation to award does comply with the Town of Hampton purchase policy. We did receive three bids. Also move the a second. Second. All okay. those in favor? Yep. Unanimous. And the last one before you is for sodium hypochlorite. Uh, this recommendation uh, is to recommend that the Board of Selectmen authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with Borden Remington for a duration of January 1st, 2019 through December 30th, 2020. This recommendation to award does not comply with the Town of Hampton purchasing policy as we only received two bids. I did include the list of vendors it was sent to. Um, this is just one of those products. There aren't multiple out there. So you sent it to seven, mm -hmm. and you only had two back. Correct. We have a motion to uh, accept the bid. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. That is all I have. OK. Do you want us to uh, wait for the warrant articles? Yeah, why don't we do that? OK. Um, could I ask a question while these? Well, they're 
Oh. Okay, they're coming well, back for the Warren article. So is it? Is it? What's your question? Just the old Mill Pond Dam. Is that totally finished? No. And, but we've been taking pictures all along, and right. so yeah. we have a full documentation in public works. Yeah, the outlet structure's there. It's it's Just up to grade. It's been loamed and seated, right. but there is some the cleanup. The dam is here. operational. We are now. Will there restoration. be anything more done until spring? Are you are they laying off for the winter? Uh, they may Lay put off. in some uh, additional cleanup and barrier type stuff. Yeah. Um, weather permitting. But you'd say what, 80% finished or? Oh, no, I'd put it more like 90, okay. 95. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Okay. Just a minor clean Thank so you. Very that's functional, a, very. Uh, that's a relief to have that done. Yeah. Oh, thank you very we much. We agree. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. See you in a little bit. Yeah. Christy Pulliam, Finance Director, the monthly financials. Christy's going to be tired of seeing us. <laughs> I don't think she's ever tired of seeing most of us. <laughs> I'm all good. You guys might get tired of seeing me. All no, right, no. so November financials went out towards the end of last week, I believe, maybe even Friday. Um, it's the 11th month of the year. The target is 91.67%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 17 to 18. In 18, revenue is less than 17 by $81,937. That has dropped a lot. The gap has closed a lot on that, though. That was mostly related to the um, additional highway subsidy money that came in in 17. The month's total income was $626,317. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $307,528. Interest on taxes at $4,955. Payment in lieu of taxes at $120,000. Building permits at $23,744. Miscellaneous state grants and reimbursements at $7,183. Departmental income at $46,440. The by sewer agreement at $20,445. Interest on deposits at $15,941. Other revenues at $5,211. And the real estate trust at $73,027. On the expense side of things, you will find that we are 90.83% spent or under budget by $207,293 or 0.84%. In November of, of 2017, we were under budget by $637,546, or 2.58%. General government is under target by $271,650. Police is over target by $4,478. Fire is under target by $72,506 when you remove the open purchase order that's related to the AFG grant. Building and code is under target by 23,150. Emerge emergency management is over budget by 855. Hydrants are over budget by $22,307. Street lighting is under target by 10,114. Public works is over target by $59,719. Animal control is under target by 3,917. Mosquito control is under budget and should end the year under budget. Welfare is under target by $8,983. Recreation is under target by $9,422. Library is under target by $16,724. And conservation is under target by $1,063. Fund 24, the recreation has a balance of $190,198, which includes beach sticker donations of $21,046 and $13,828 being awarded in scholarships this year. Fund 25, the cable committee has a balance of $376,000, $376,055. Fund 26, the private detail, has a balance of 211,461. And I would just note there that there is open purchase orders in that, re in that uh, fund for $78,779 for cruisers. So that brings down that balance. 
Fund 27, the EMS has a balance of 289890 and the wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2018, total 47584 with a balance in the account of $231,184 and fees collected to date of $427,011. And that is that. Questions from for Christina? No, we're just one more month to go. And I know. Yeah, good job. Thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have questions. Um, one thing I had last time about, I know that it's going to be a concern of the budget committee as a lot of, there's going to be a lot of concerns, but one of the concerns is the parking enforcement because we tested something new this year, which I still think is a good idea. But looking at these financials, I think there's probably some work we have to do for next year. Yeah. And I'm sure that yeah. management is already aware of this, but I just don't know if there's anything that maybe we can put forward before the budget gets finalized just to uh, show the town that we are planning on. I mean, it was the first year of doing something. It's Correct. not going to work as smoothly as we think it's going to work, no matter what you do. But I know that the people we have and we did employ are, for the most part, longtime employees of Hampton, and they are doing this. And I think it worked very well down there. I know the parking lot seemed a lot busier. There was cruisers going in and out, which was very nice to have. And it also helps with the traffic flow on the busy nights, having the cruisers already down there. But I just wanted to bring that up again in hopes that maybe we can just be prepared so if questions do get asked about it. I know the Budget Committee hasn't voted on anything yet, but when the time comes that they do vote, I don't want that to just get completely stamped down because there's just nothing that they can look at to show that we are working on, you know, maybe working out some of the kinks. Okay. And, and on that one, um, a lot, some of the money was just moved from the police budget. So would you like maybe something that shows Yeah. You, like, that? you might be able okay. to, you might already have the information. It just yep. might be, have to be presented a certain way okay. to show them that, because looking at this, you can't really tell. Correct. And I was figured I'd wait for another month and see what happened, and it still doesn't look quite right. So. Okay. But yeah, you sh you can probably you might be able to do something on your own. And then the other increase in the police department that I want to bring up, that is actually a hundred and five percent used as of November, is the uh, support services, which I noted last time is uh, heavily spent in the months of July, August, and September. Right. So. Because in support services, uh, some of the big items there are the part-time special officers. Yeah. So they are not using too many of those at this time of year, just for more for like details and stuff. So that's two hundred thirty thousand of that. What is the total there? Eight hundred thirty-six thousand. Right. And then the other large item there is the summer coverage. The full timers that do summer coverage, and that total is two hundred twenty thousand five hundred eighty-nine. So you have about 450,000 more, almost pretty much more than half of that whole actual is all related to the summer. Right, which is what we need to make sure that we keep it safe down yep. there, which is what our police department just got an award for. So thank you, I just wanted to point that out. Thanks. Thanks. Jim? Yeah, thank you, Christy. Yeah. And I want to you know, compliment you and the town manager and the assistant town manager because last, last month you found that there was a problem, you, you attacked the problem, Pretty, pretty quickly and pretty uh, aggressively and took care of it and, and we're in much better shape right now because of that. And it's because of your monthly reports and staying right on top of what we're doing is, is really good. So I wanna, I wanna compliment you on that and I wanna compliment you on, uh, you do a good job on another committee. Thank you. <laughs> she doesn't want us going I can, straight and narrow. I can, say, uh, I can say yes, this was an excellent job this <laughs> month. You had a lot of work to do. Yes probably a lot of sleepless nights and yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you have done a great job over the year and over your tenure here uh, of working with it but people need to remember too as, as we get closer and closer we're still working on 2017's money right. you know this is a, a default budget and yeah. that's the problem when you have default budgets is you're working on what you had from the year before and it's so important to look at the budget make up your own mind and make sure that you give our departments the, the funding and facilities they need to do that. So, uh, but I want to thank you for, for all the work you do. You're welcome. Okay. 
Ray, uh, is Ray in? No. Nope. No, you're you're the substitute. Okay, you're the substitute. And Jay? <laughs> here tonight to request your approval of the purchase of a 10 acre parcel of land uh, in the Hampton Town Forest uh, for the sum of $10,000. Uh, that parcel is the one that is in orange on the map and you can see there that White Lane mm. goes Good. up and through that parcel and then continues on toward Ice Pond. So um, we were very happy to have the opportunity to purchase that yes. and uh, request your approval to do so. Any questions? Um, on the map that you uh, provided us with, and I have it in this mess somewhere, um, it looked like two parcels to me. Of course, I'm not going to be able to. Oh, Actually, it says three, three, three. There were three little boxes within the it shows box. The yellow one here. The yellow one. And then it yeah. shows the long. It, now this. It, no, I think it what. Looks like it's there. Yeah. But that's all one parcel. I think what you're looking at, Mary Louise, is the two parcels that we purchased previously. Oh, okay. Oh. So. We purchased that previously and that previously. So Those are two this parcels. Is the That's the one. Gotcha. This okay. is the one. You have already approved those other two. Yeah. So they, they have turned from yellow to green. Yeah. No. And especially since we've been able to tamp down on illegal uh, discharge of firearms in the town forest, this is great to see that area come together and be secured. Yeah, it is, it is protected and it gives us the opportunity to do trail maintenance there mm -hmm. and put uh, trail markers. Yeah, thank you for your hard work on that. Yep. Regina? Um, no, I think it's a great idea. I'm ready to uh, make a motion for them to do it. Sure. I'll second. Well, can we let the rest of the yeah. board speak yeah. first? Um, just, just a question, just for the people at home and stuff. Where does the money come from? Uh, this money, good question, this money is coming from the conservation fund. The right. fund that we established for the purpose of acquiring land and conservation easements uh, to benefit the town and the residents of the town. So it doesn't come out of the general budget or anything? It comes out of your comes out of the fund that uh, Which is, is under the purpose. auspices of the Conservation Commission. Thank you. The Commission earlier in the year when we discussed yep. uh, reaching out to some of the owners of this land, Good. the Commission voted Good. to allocate $20,000 toward that effort uh, to purchase land, and that's right. what we're using. Excellent. All right, so now we'll accept a, a motion from Regina, a second from Mary Louise to accept yeah. to authorize the purchase of this piece of property. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. If I may, just as a quick side note, um, last Saturday we had a ribbon cutting for an Eagle Scout project that is that established two parking spaces at the entrance to Jaunty's Lane uh, oh. to give people better access to the town forest. Um, the scout um, raised money uh, through a fundraising fundraising effort and came in under budget. Um, and the he has decided that the remaining funds are going to be donated to the conservation commission to be put into the town forest fund. Uh, so uh, he's doing a great job, and we appreciate that. And we'll come back to you once we have that number established, so we can get your blessing Good. to accept those funds as well. And I have one more quick sure. question, if I may. You know, a couple of years ago, that nice young man had a project to, to, to put signage and stuff in, in the insane. conservation land. Um, is that helping, do you know? And is there less damage in there now? Are people, for example, with the, the range, we don't have all that mess of, of uh, casings and stuff, do we? Uh, no, we don't. Um, 
uh, to the best of my knowledge. Right. Um, I think certainly the signage that was established um, helps people understand what the town forest is um, and what its uses are. Good. I think also the cleanups mm -hmm. that yes. we've done in the town forest, um, and especially in the area where there had mm -hmm. been target shooting, has done a great job Good. also to discourage people from that kind of activity. Yeah. Now, I haven't thought to look lately, but are the, si are the signs now all correct when you go to White's Lane and the postings of, you know, like, uh, don't let your dog, you know, bring your stuff along for your dog and what the, uh, what the criteria are for, for going into the um, conservation land. Uh, I believe to the extent that there is signage that it is accurate. Um, we still want to put some more signage in there um, to establish a trail map and, and some other issues, but we, we aren't there yet. Excellent. Okay, thank you. All right, now, were you guys going to speak on the, uh, while we have you guys here? For the, re, uh, for the money article, article. Yeah. article? Yes. Yep. While, we, while we have you here, so you don't hang around. Sure. Give me a moment. Let me flip, yep. the, flip, the, flip the chart. Hmm. I just didn't want you to have to hang around. We just like to keep Jay busy. Doing a fine job. <laughs> um, as you know, we traditionally, the Conservation Commission has asked for funds to um, increase the amount of money that we have in that conservation fund that we're using to purchase that 10 acre parcel we just discussed. And, and other parcels and easements as they come along. Um, this year we are not doing that um, because we have the opportunity to purchase a parcel um, and um, we are going to be using some conservation funds for that but we don't have enough money in the conservation fund to purchase the parcel entirely. So we're going to use that warrant article to ask for the balance of the funds. It's a 70-acre parcel on the west side of town. Um, as you can see on the map, it's map 63, lot 1. It connects part of the Batchelder uh, farm property that we purchased a number of years ago and the Herd farm property, as well as um, property from uh, PS uh, PSNH. PSNH that we acquired some years ago. So it's another piece that completes the protection of the Taylor River watershed. Great. Um, and we think this is important both for water quality issues as well as for wildlife, wildlife habitat issues in town. The purchase price um, that has been agreed upon with the owners is $108,000. Uh, we have, these are round numbers, roughly $98,000 in our conservation fund. Um, as Barbara mentioned, we had allocated previously uh, $20,000 from that to be used for town forest parcel purchases, which would leave us approximately $78,000. We don't want to clean out the fund completely, but yeah. we want to strike a balance. Um, so we're offering to put up $55,000 from the conservation fund for the purchase of this parcel and asking the voters of the town to put up an equal amount, $55,000, so we can complete the purchase. Now, we know that comes in at $110,000, and the asking price is $108,000, but that $2,000 is likely to be used for yeah. closing costs, title insurance, and other expenses related to the purchase of the parcel. I think this is marvelous, and I am happy to move that we approve that. Just a question. I think it's a great idea, too, but how much of this, how much land will you get out of this? 70 acres. 70. It will be conserved land. Yes. Absolutely. Thank seven you. acres? Or seven, seven zero. zero. Seventy acres. Making right. it a total of 300 acres with the herd farm. Excellent. PSNH land and the bachelor farm. Excellent. Jim, any questions? Yeah. Fred, do you have any feelings on this? No. It's a good deal. You won't find a deal like this with that kind of acreage for right. this kind of money. So do we have to amend the warrant article as it's written? No, I think the warrant article complies with what they want. Okay. Just put in the right amount of money. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fifty-five thousand, right? That's what. That's what we have. Yeah. Okay. That's what so. we have. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining it. I think that helps us, and as we move forward, I think that. Will be good. That that's that is a um, complete um, future uh, benefit for the town for the unending, unseen future. That will be a wonderful, wonderful gift to this town. Well, especially in terms of water quality, I think you'll see the benefits immediately. So I, I, I think it's going to be a, a plus for the town. Very good. 
Well, and saving some precious land for wildlife and just as is. This is congratulations to you guys and conservation. I'm delighted. The other thing is that the old river comes down north to south from the Northampton border down to the Taylor River and it mm -hmm. comes right through those properties. So it's protecting that watershed as well. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you All very right. much. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you very much. It. Next one we have is Charlie Preston. Look at that, he appears. <laughs> Pretty good. Good afternoon, Charlie. How are you? Well, good evening. Good evening. Um, I got on the agenda to talk about the Ashworth F parking lot. Ah. And uh, more so in the off season, that's what I'm talking about when the, when the um, snow ban is on. And the fact that we've been charging $50 a month, which I, I don't think is fair and right. And, um, I know uh, I got a draft of the minutes on the 26th, and, and you brought it up, Jim. I appreciate it. We said let's have some kind of follow-up on this. And, you know, and on page five of the minutes of that meeting, the town manager stated that, um, you know, if this is the case, we shouldn't charge in the summer either. Well, I think that's a little bit of fear. You know, we, we all know we're going to charge in the summertime. It also, you know, it also goes on in a couple paragraphs down later that if, if we allow people to park here, that this lot will be so full, there won't be any place for people to park when there is flooding. All right, quite honestly, there shouldn't be anybody parking in that lot when there's flooding, because that lot floods. You know, last January, we had water inside the new fire station doors. You look at those elevations and you transfer them across the street. And, you know, we shouldn't be there. Um, there was a meeting down at the police station this past week on the 11th, and I guess it's uh, called Hoyle Tanner and Associates. Mm -hmm. yep. And there was a bunch of people that came down here. They were from the Ashworth Ave area, um, off the back streets, I should say, off at Ashworth. And they were the people that really got the ball rolling with that. Well, they went down to the precinct, and then they came to the, and the precinct said, you should come up and talk to the select. Well, you know, 30, 40 people showed up. Of course, this board acted when you see that many people. And that's when on the Warren article for 100000 and I guess that's where the, 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 uh, the money's coming from for the Hoyle Tanner thing. But, you know, over the years, I, I think there's some things that we can do with little or no cost, and, and don't be surprised when Hoyle Tanner recommends them, you know. Charlie, can I, did you, did you look at the minutes of December 3rd? No, I haven't looked at the minutes of December 3rd. Can I, can I just read to you what we, we did that night? Absolutely. We'll, if that will help you out. Absolutely. And uh, we received information on the winter leases. It's been up to 750 each year and have two standards, uptown and down the, and parking at the beach, the off-season. The small amount of revenue, notwithstanding, still requires the businesses that rental and not with, you know, the businesses that still require rentals should have parking spaces. Mm -hmm. So if you have a rental, you should still require. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what it does. But what we're allowing people do, to do is to park in that front row of the beach at the Ashworth Ave lot. Yep. Mm -hmm. They can park there. The only thing we're at requesting is that they move them the day after a snowstorm so that we can allow them to keep that area plowed. Yep. And we, we allow them to do that from is it November 15th to March 15th. Yep. And so we, we voted to allow them to do that. Yeah. So they have to have a p town parking sticker. So they have to have be a Hampton resident. And they, ha and they can park in that lot overnight. So, and they can do it every night. Is there any reason that they have to be a town resident? Can they be anybody? Can anybody park in there? We, 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 we've said that it's, it's for, for Hampton residents. And the other well, parking lots in town are just Hampton residents also. But they can't park in those. They, they, there's only certain parts. The parts that people can park overnight and all the time is for Hampton residents. So that way they were, it allows us to keep it clear so that we can plow them. And then that allows the people a chance to move their cars so we can plow that other part. And in, in, in Rusty, and, you know, with all due respect, Mr. Chairman, you know, you stated in that meeting about, you know, the odd and even system on that same page five. And I, and I think that's great. I think we need to be proactive on this in both flooding and parking and clearing the lot out. You know, I'm glad to hear we're moving forward on it. 
But in this thing here, you know, you said the state is having an odd and even policy, and it's something we should look at. Yep, we you should. Know? Not only at the parking at the beach, but the one uptown also. So we don't have people parking here three months at a time, which that does, that accomplishes by yeah. going odd and even in the state. I think I informed this board, they met the day after the election, so they met on Wednesday, November 7th, and they stated that the signs were being made at the time. They're still not there, but we all know that government is slow. <laughs> and you know, and I think we can teach a lot of people how to do it and how to do it right. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Hoyle Tanner can learn something from the expertise that we have with people that know the beach and people that also, you know, the DPW and the, and the people that are plowing. I've spoke to the guy that plows a lot and got him thinking about it outside the box. But to say that you know we wouldn't have spaces if we allowed anybody to park in there, you know, for flooding, they shouldn't park for flooding. Dick Violet, and I said this the other night with Hoyle Tanner. Dick Violet was the clerk of the works in the, during the infrastructure project. At the time, I didn't want to see the, you know, public safety facilities built there, based on it's the lowest elevation on the beach. So I went and asked him the elevations, and he told me from the Ashworth Avalon in front of the police station to the state park is five foot difference. Uh. So when you get up to the Clues lot, you know, let's you could say you bring the two or three feet difference. Well, two or three feet when you're flooding down there is huge. <laughs> we all know it. You know, a foot a foot's huge. Yep. At that meeting the other night, Chairman I shouldn't say Chairman, I should say Commissioner Ladd. You know, there was a nice lady that spoke and said it floods down there and at that lot. And we said, Go to the clues lot. And he and he said, No problem. You know, he was right there and he says, Every you know, go up there. So we need to promote that because we don't want anybody parking down in that lot when it floods. You know, and people need to know whether they park there, whether during it's a flood event or a snow event, it's really at their own risk. Absolutely. You know? And I, I don't see why that we shouldn't allow anybody to park in that lot. And I really don't foresee the problem of having too many cars. I think if you look at the busiest place in the off season right now for cars, and I, I stand to be corrected, it's probably right across from my father's house, 63 Ocean Boulevard. You know, you might see 20 or 30 cars up that end now, and that's just more or less because of the concentration of housing right there. There's more year-round housing down that end than there is down near the police station parking lot. I, you know, I don't see why we shouldn't be able to let anybody park down there. There would just have to be residents. So, you know, maybe you can, maybe you can consider tweaking that. Um, I also wanted to say, you know, we got some Christmas presents coming up with tides. From December 22nd, we have a 10-1, the 3rd, a 10-4, the 4th, the 24th, a 10-5, the 25th, Christmas Day, we have a 10-4, and the 26th, we have a 10-1. We need to be proactive and let people know that. Fortunately, all these tides mm -hmm. are during the day. So we can, you know, we can see what's going on. They start on the 22nd at 10-20, and the last day on the 26th is 1:45. The other ones are all 11, 12, 1 o'clock. You know, we need to be proactive and let people know more than that rather than wait till Hoyle Tanner tells us that we need to be proactive and let people know on it. You know, there's a lot of things, Rusty, you know and I know. We know, we know some of these things. And we, we could be a little more proactive on them. Um, you said the flooding meeting. I'm just going to touch on this quick. The elevations with Dick Bylet. All right, if we want cars safely off the road in the winter and flooding, we need to give people good direction and they need to park at their own risk. They should, every, anybody should be able to park down that lot. I don't foresee the problem of too many cars, and I, I would appreciate that if you, if you would consider amending that, because um, I don't see a problem. And, 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 if it, and if it really becomes that much of a problem, we can, you know, we, we can address it again. Okay, any questions from the board? I have a question. <clears throat> Actually, I thought of something while you were talking about the flooding meetings, which I'm sorry I missed last week, but I did want to ask Jen Hale a question about that, but they're coming back up here for the Warren articles? Yep. Okay. And I think just listening to you talk, which I know you always have good points about it down there. You know it down there, which is very good to have people like you around. But maybe it would make more sense. I mean, if Ashworth lot is not good to park when it's flooding, and next week looks like we're going to have a bunch of high tides, I mean, has anyone, I know Bob Ladd said he was willing to let people, people can park in the Clues lot, but if the Clues lot is a better all around, I mean, maybe the precinct should be approached because that would be a place that people could go, not just for the winter ban, but also it would be a safe place for them to flood. 
because right now we're telling people to park over here, but then when it's flooded, you can't park there. You should go park over here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe we should work more with the precinct and see if we can figure out something that will work for everyone in all the types of situations that we have happening down there right now. And the state. Because the clues are yeah, exactly. two, three foot higher in the state the park, like Dick Violet said, five feet. Yeah. The thing is, though, you know, Regina, if you or uh, any one of us live down in, say, the Brown Abbott, you know, we want to park the closest we can to home. We don't want to park down the clues of the state park if we live down there. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. but if we had negotiated some easements on East Street, it's a foot higher. When you pull up to the stop sign at Brown Abbey, you can see a foot higher in the difference. You know, maybe a, maybe a private guy will let, because it's a neighborhood thing. You don't want to park a half a mile from home if you can park, you know, a short, half the distance or less. But, but, Mr. Chairman, we did section off a part of the municipal lot for people correct. to be able to use, right? Right. The front row of that, as you look at the lot, the north section the front row the whole front row keep it up close to the road as possible it still allows them to plow the thing and it allows people to park there overnight so I, the only thing i would ask is if you would have meant it that anybody can park there you know and and, and, I, and i did talk to joe gizzy who runs the loader down there and he said well, you know what you're suggesting the front row and i just told him i said joe think about it as far as you know if we, if we actually got people to move because we can do this right, and the other people, you know, we can be the leaders in this. By move, making a move every day, you don't have junk cars. You know, you don't have someone storing a car all winter. If someone wants to store a car, let them go pay somewhere to store it. You know, they shouldn't be storing it on town property. Totally agree with it. You know? Yeah. Totally agree with it. So, I, you know, that, that's maybe like after Joe thinks about it, maybe the DPW that they say, if we get the system going, we can make it work. And then we get rid of the junks, you know. I think Storage. it's a work in progress, but we've made some progress in this, and I think Jim, you I'm set. All right, Louis. The reality is that parts of that beach are going to be overwhelmed with water more and more as time goes on. We're going to start losing parts of the beach. As a member of the planning board, I am voting against any of these um, moves that people are making to raise their property on pilings up to three feet, etc. Uh, there were a couple of ladies at the last planning board meeting, and one of them has already paid to have uh, her home put up higher, and it's not doing any good. Uh, a couple of years back, I think I remember. Um, that we were doing so using some drones. Jay Diener, I think, had that idea, and we've done it a couple of times showing the high tides. You have the drain, drone go over the ocean and show after storm A or B or whatever it is to see where the uh, inflow is. But realistically, we are going to start losing large parts of that beach, and we will not get them back. So we've got to be a lot smarter about what we're doing down there. And I think the problem is going to get worse, a lot worse. I was talking with Bob Ladd on the phone about a week ago, and he said, oh, Mary Louise, the whole road is all full of water. It was just a regular day. It wasn't raining or snowing or anything. He said, oh, there's water all over the place. So we're going to have to be more realistic, I think, about our coastline. So I, uh, I, I think we've got big problems with that water. Well, Mr. Chairman, I just ask if you consider changing that to let anybody park down there, not just residents, because it, it helps get people off the road. Yeah, that's I think, good. I think the whole policy should be changed as far as snowing anyway, but that's another story for another day, because mm -hmm. it doesn't just snow between one and one and seven, as we, as we all know. There is a lady that, if, 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 so people are going to be able to park there for free along the front row for right Correct. now. Correct. And we can all obviously we can tweak it later. There is a woman, very nice lady. She's been paying for a few years, mm -hmm. and she works out of the toll booth. So I'm sure she's not making a lot of money. I'm sure she's earning every penny she gets, you know. And she's been paying up front, and she's paid through. And I said to her, I says, well, I'm going up for this. And, you know, yeah, I yeah. didn't know if, if that money, you know, I know, the, I know the governments don't like to give any money back, but maybe, you know, they prorate after the they $50 a month, they prorate during the four months. But maybe it could be prorated, and that, and that woman could you know, be granted more time in, say, April or May before the thing. Just a consideration, but 
Oh, we'll take a look at it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. That's a good suggestion. Town manager's report. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, the, um, the old Mill Pond Dam is complete except for a very short punch list. Uh, minor items to be completed as the work goes along. And I suspect that it'll be spring before all of them are completed. Mm, okay. Work progresses on a new sewer line from the treatment plant to the Masonic Hall on Tide Mill Road. The contractor believes that he will be completed for the Tide Mill Road portion this week, and he is. In fact, it's been temporarily paved. Good. Um, which will be taken care of in the spring with permanent paving. Um, work on the installation of piping from the Church Street pump station to the Route 101 bridge has started, will continue subject to weather conditions. People please watch for detours because of this work. Workmen are in the, uh, watch for the workmen who are in the roadway. Petition warrant articles will be accepted until June, January 8th, 2019 in the selectman's office, which closes at 5 p.m. Please remember that there is no parking on any street in Hampton between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. until March 15th, 2019. I did, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, take a little trip through town at 4.35 o'clock the other day, and I counted 31 motor vehicles parked overnight on the road. So um, people need to uh, to move, and now that they're going to be able to park in that parking lot, they should park there. Good. Um, earlier this evening, someone mentioned uh, in public uh, comment that uh, the utility company is, in fact, going to be doing work on the electrical system. They are going to disrupt power to residents and businesses. Uh, Unitel is embarking on an upgrade of the electrical infrastructure for all of Hampton Beach. This is a multi-million dollar, multi-month effort, which will include upgrading the wires, conductors, and utilities to speak. Every transformer, and, some, and in some circumstances, the poles as well. The purpose of these upgrades is to keep pace with the development of Hampton Beach by modernizing the utility infrastructure. So you need to, they're indicating that service will possibly be off for a total of two hours, uh, but you need to stay in touch with uh, Unitel to see exactly what they're doing. I'm sure they'll have things up online and they'll be putting things out for notices to customers as to what's going to happen. Um, I did after talking to uh, Public Works and talking to the board, some board members. Uh, if you want, I have prepared a letter, uh, which I'll send if you approve it, uh, to ask them to stop the, the proposal to pave Route 1A uh -huh. during 2019. Uh, if we do have, a, at least at this point in time, if we do have a default budget, it's going to put some stretch on the fact that we have to pay to, to raise the infrastructure down there. Uh, those funds can be used for better purposes as we go along. We're going to need those. Um, we had a request from the Department of Transportation today, and I believe I've given <laughs> you each a, a copy of that information. They're going to be, on all state highways in the town of Hampton, they're going to be uh, putting up signage uh, indicating curve signs and, and chevrons based upon measurements taken while driving each curve. Uh, what they would like to do is they would like to have signed a release dealing with... Um, the ability to do that work and <coughs> to control traffic um, and work with the police department and others on all class one, two, and three highways within the town. Something we did before when they were doing some other work in town. We've done it before, but uh, I need your authorization to go ahead and sign that if you approve. Um, that's going to help them complete that work and get it done. We also, uh, the owner of the uh, the Colony Motel, uh, as we all know, I believe was stated last week, passed away. Um, we had asked to have, and there is in fact on a judge's desk in, in uh, the county, a request to uh, appoint an executor to, uh, uh, as a temporary person to take over the uh, problem of that building. And it's, it's, it's because people are, have from time to time broken in. The police department is keeping an eye on it. But that's all gone uh, because he died in test eight. Uh, the court will have to appoint somebody to take charge of that. Uh, and town council may talk to you later about that. Mm. That's it, sir. Are you
Yes, I don't know whether to address this to Fred or to Mr. Jacobs, but the uh, Unitil plan for the light at the beach, if we go with the nice people who were here two weeks ago with those uh, new LED lights and stuff, were we projecting to do that at the beach? In other words, if we're going to do this project, why would Unitil have to run around and shutting off the power down there and fooling around with the lights? They're, they're proposing to build a new infrastructure to provide electrical service to the people who live at the beach and the businesses who are there. It has nothing to do with street lighting. Um, oh. This is just this is the actual electrical service to all those buildings, and they're going to modernize it and bring it up to date. In the winter? In the winter, because there are fewer <laughs> people there. Okay, so that won't have an impact on what we were discussing on the street lighting. No, because that has to go to town meeting for approval. Okay, excellent, because that sounds like a great project, so I just want to make sure we don't miss out on it. And I have one more for you, two more, actually, really quickly. Our letter from uh, Commander Bennett uh, on the um, cemetery flag holders, would I know that you, uh, I guess you talked with him, but isn't that for the cemetery uh, trustees to deal with? Well, the American Legion has traditionally provided those holders yeah. and the flags. Yeah. And uh, my understanding is they're going to present a petition article at town meeting to just buy them and put them in. But why Get should they have with. to do that if the cemetery trustees have money in their trust fund? Well, Couldn't you they? have to have a special warrant article for that. They want to pick the, the, uh, the holders and they want to put them in place. Oh, so my goodness. They're going to submit a special warrant article for that. It's going to be a petition article, a pro right. citizen petition article. That's correct. Yes. Oh, okay. And the last, um, you and I spoke very briefly last week on uh, confirming some of these. I, the Budget Committee has been talking about $90 an hour for private details. And I think you said something about you don't you didn't know that that was accurate. I you? don't believe that's accurate at all. So if you um, don't mind getting back. To no, us, so. I, I just haven't had the time to do no, it. No, I know that. It's on my list. I'm not saying yeah. immediately. Yeah, because yeah. I would be interested, and the yeah. budget committee probably would be as right. well. I believe that the uh, the particular uh, chief of police who was said he was making ninety dollars an hour uh, on this particular detail here is making his actual pay from the town he works in and nothing more, which is like forty dollars an hour. Well, see, that I think it would help uh, especially the budget <coughs> committee and the public just to clarify that. So I appreciate your help yeah. on that. Regina? Yes, um, I think that if it pleases the board that perhaps we should have the town manager send that letter out to uh, DOT asking them to... Make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll then. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And then I have another question about DOT. <laughs> Have we uh, gotten, weren't we waiting on something for them to, some type of a permit or something for construction? I believe we have that permit on a limited basis at this point. Okay, so. Um, yeah, subject to weather conditions and, and other approvals from the Department of Transportation so that neither one of us will be going bump in the night and interfering with each other oh. when we have bad weather. Okay. But when are they going to replace the drainage? Mm -hmm. yeah. Jim, do you have anything? No. Okay, I have a couple of things. I have, uh, you need a motion for the state work that you talked about, the chevrons and stuff? I believe, yes. I, I do need the, the board's approval to sign that permit from the state. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Yep. Unanimous. I had a question the other day on your number five. You, you talk about uh, parking in Hampton. Is this include state roads? It does not include state highways. We have no jurisdiction there. Okay, and that's what I want to make sure. Good clarification. Because, uh, I had somebody ask me about Ocean Boulevard, and I said, I believe that's a state road, and they said yes. It is, and, and there is considerable parking there in the roadway, but that's a state problem, not ours. Right, okay. Mm. All right, old business, the default budget. We've submitted to the Budget Committee. Okay. The Board of Selectmen had approved it. Uh, that's yep. all I know at this point. All right. Mm -hmm. So th then that's taken care of. So it's, it's already gone to them, correct? Yes, sir, it has. Yes. All right. 2019 Warren Articles. Huh. <laughs> A.K.A. Hardman of the Arteries. 
Uh oh. I see now we have them numbered. Mark needs a well, book. Well, we right? need to have a count, so we numbered them. Uh, that doesn't mean that's the order they'll be right. in, but. Right. Um, the first one is election of officers, which is always the first warrant article. We have reserved 10 warrant articles for zoning amendments. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also have article number 12, which has um, been given to us as, as from the planning board as part of the master plan. And there is an appropriation in that for $18,000 to do the base work to, uh, to have a new master plan for the town. So that does need a board of selectmen recommendation along with a budget committee recommendation. And so while we're talking on these, I, I would like to make a motion. I know Rick's not here mm -hmm. and he couldn't be here, but he is home listening. And I would ask that the other board members allow him to come in tomorrow and give his vote, vote on it so that we can have it either however it turns out. Right. I'll and second that. that. So all yeah. those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. So first one we'll have to do is talk on article number 12. Is there any uh, recommendations from the board? Uh, yeah, long overdue, I'd make the motion that we accept I, this. Which one is that? I didn't know my plan. sheets with me. Yes, master plan. Excellent. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. The next one's a budget. We can't talk about that until we get that. How do we get a budget? Correct. Police contracts, we are going to talk about Under, yeah. later. Uh, actually, the board has already approved the article to go in. Mm -hmm. You've approved the concept and, and yep. you've endorsed the article, so yeah. I would assume that the board would approve these two articles. Make a motion that we approve the two articles. Two police articles. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Yeah, I just would like oh. to say what the, I have the schedule here of what the right. amounts are. So these are for the sergeant police contract and the patrolman police mm -hmm. contract. So the tax effect for the 2019-39 weeks would be 21,275 and for the patrolman police contract for 39 weeks would be 80,204. Okay, so I would uh, just want to make those numbers mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. I am ready to vote. The, uh, uh, just so everybody knows, the first one is, is six tenths of a cent and the second one is 2.4 cents per thousand. Yeah. Thanks. We have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And we should clarify for the public that the contracts begin on April 1st of each year. Yes. So if the first year is a nine-month contract. Right. Uh, the next money article is, I'm going to dial down here, um, article number, proposed article number 19, which is the turnout gear for the fire department. Yes. The cost of that is $200,000, and that's to come from the reserve fund balance. Yes, I will so move, Mr. Chairman, that we approve that. that. Okay, and I, I just want to uh, explain that this will also doesn't ha won't money will go in there, but we don't have to wait a year for another warrant article. We can, the board can approve. This article is written so that the board of selectmen will be agents for this. As we go through each year, there are various times when these these uh, particular turnout gear have to be purchased to comply with the law. Mm -hmm. And the, the year, year can't be more than 10 years old. So the idea here was to have the selectmen be able to purchase them as they fall due. And then you have a large contingent. Uh, there are no secondary uh, units at all. Those need to be purchased probably all at once uh, to get yeah. them in and, and yeah. be able to protect the firefighters who are out there helping all of us keep our properties uh, fit. And, and this is an ongoing fund, right? This is something that every year the town will be required to put a certain amount of money. Uh, the estimate we had was $24,000 a year, and we do that. This fund will self-perpetuate for a number of decades. Right. And, and, and just to clarify it, would we be better off to say it says firefighter turnout gear? Should it say firefighter protective gear? You could say both. Put, slash, put a slash. Slash. Yes. Firefighter turnout gear. Slash. Protective gear. Protective gear. Yeah. And that that covers more than just a bunker coat mm -hmm. and bunker pants. That yeah. covers stuff yeah. that's out there. So I'll make that a, a motion to amend that to that. I'll second that yeah. amendment. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment? Yeah. yeah. All and right. Mr. Chairman, you probably should stipulate that this uh, this gear isn't 
something you'd walk in and just buy off the shelf no, a size all... 40 shirt the gear is uh, is set up to fit each individual correct firefighter so. All right, so we have a motion in the in the two hundred thousand. You feel is enough to start this for the first year? Mm -hmm. It is, sir. Okay. Good. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. I just want to on this Warren article and stuff that people get out there and explain exactly what when you say protective gear, which is very very important, and that you know that, that the public realizes when they're voting on this, they're voting on, on protecting somebody who's going out to save right. lives. Right. right. You know, we, we gotta, you got to give people the tools. You know, yeah. we have a good good fire service. We have good police officers. But you want to know something? You have to give them the gear to do the tools with. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important. Yeah. So, right. And as, as it is said in here, there is no impact on the, on the, uh, the, the, the uh, tax impact. Uh, article number 20, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that that article be withdrawn. Which I think it's confusing. Uh, excuse me. No, no article, I'm talking about. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yes. <laughs> article 20 is is the safer grant. Article 21 is the higher, and I think 21 should be discontinued. I, safer grant allows us to accept federal funds to hire firefighters mm -hmm. over a three-year period. Well, I, I, I looked at this over the past couple of weeks, and I and I agree with you. I think we ought to concentrate more on the on the safer grant, and and, and work with the chief and try to make sure we get this passed, and. Uh, not confuse the voters, and uh, so I'll make a motion that we disregard Article 21. I'll I'll second, second that. Or all those in favor? Unanimous. Basically, remove it. You remove need it. to make a recommendation right. in Article 20, sir. I make a motion that we uh, move Article 20. Move Article 20 as written, written, and uh, and that's what that is a safer grant. Safer safer firefighter grant. safer oh, yes. grant. Yes, yes, excellent. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now I do know that the grant process has not opened yet, Thank you. but it should be at any time. So we may be getting a uh, uh, some information from the fire chief about yes. requesting that that we be able to allow him to seek that grant and Excellent. and do that. So Good. I know that's out there, and uh, but it is not yet. So it could be coming at any time. Right. Article 22 is the revaluation of property in the yep. community. We are already past the threshold for, which is 90 percent uh, equalization. We are already down into the 84 percent equalization yeah. ratio, uh, and we're supposed to keep within 10 percent of the 100 percent ratio. Mm -hmm. Any recommendations? I would recommend that we move this forward. I second. second. Oh. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Part-time code enforcement officer is the next article, uh, and that would be an impact of five tenths of one cent for the first year, which is uh, really um, half the year. Uh, actually, salary starts on April one, so it's thirteen less thirteen weeks for the year, uh, and this would be a part-time officer. He would be a code enforcement officer, and he would report to the, under the supervision of the building inspector, uh, the support of selectmen, the town manager, enforce building codes, zoning, land ordinances, bylaws, regulations, state and federal laws, codes, and administrative rules. I talked with the the uh, building officer, uh, Kevin. Kevin, and uh, he recommends a part time. Right now, he, as he says, I'm going to have a hard time finding a place to seat him in there. His yeah. office is pretty crowded. What about so two part time with he, no benefits? He is only requesting two one at this okay. time. If we come back later on, you know, maybe next year we'll add an additional okay. one. But at this time, he's okay. only requesting one part time. So we're going to adjust the salary to, to reflect a straight that's, salary that's with does. no benefits. That's what it's in there, isn't it? That's, that's correct. Well, 17136 yes. for the first, part, first year. As much as I think this is needed, I don't think I'm going to have to say I'm not going to support it for this year. I think that uh, getting, first of all, the master plan get to get going, I think that's really the first step. And I think adding people to start enforcing things, because I got to tell you recently, and we just had some more emails in from town council uh, late this afternoon, there's a lot of problems with uh, 
the way things have gone, just just the way the status quo of the town, things get built, you know, people look at plans, they don't, they don't, they don't, they're not the same as what is actually going on. This week I've talked to like three or four different people in various neighborhoods of town that recently moved there and they're new and they don't understand why their plans say something, but what is is actually totally different. So I feel like getting a code enforcement officer this year is too premature and we need to uh, do a little more work, maybe uh, communicating a little more with other bodies of the uh, town government before we just jump into this. See, right I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't uh, necessarily disagree with you. However, I know Kevin's office has been strapped. Yes. With, and so, so maybe some things did get overlooked, but I'm sure yeah, with having the code no, enforcement there. It's no there, reflection on there, Kevin at right. all. Right, and I, I, I know what you're saying, but I think this would allow him, free him up a little bit more and, and free the others up in his office to do the stuff they need to do. Yeah, not just that, but that fire at Foss, I'm telling you, and I've had a conversation with Jason Bichon, yeah. with these codes, the, these codes when, pla when businesses especially and uh, condominium developments, they need serious attention to codes and to building requirements. And the, these buildings have been built, built to the codes. And Are we going plans. around the table or do we so, have somebody who asks questions at so. will? Thank you. Yeah. So. Uh, what, did, is Regina finished? Mm -hmm. I'm done, thank you. Okay. Um, you know, I'm questioning this also this year. I'm just, did, did, did we do anything cost analysis or anything, you know, how much this is, this is going to save us in code enforcement and stuff. I mean, I know we're, we're putting on a part-time guy and we need a part-time guy maybe, but do we... There's no way of telling that until you actually go out and start enforcing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one of the bugaboos to the whole, uh, the whole issue yep. is that uh, you can't tell how much work there is out there until such time as you start actually enforcing. Mm -hmm. Now, will this person be, be hired on a... Um, at will, is that what you say? It would be a part-time position. So part-time position, yeah. but I mean, that could be terminated at any time? It's not a tenured position. It's not a union position. It's not a... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's not, he's not signing a year contract or anything no, like that? No, we don't do the contracts. Okay. This is a, an employee at will. Mm -hmm. At will. Yeah. All right. So, mm -hmm. he would be, you'd be able to say... Mm -hmm. Our will, his will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the planning board wants nothing to do with code enforcement. They just put down whatever the description is and walk away. So we have a motion. Also move that we put the part-time code enforcement officer. Second. I'll second it. Yeah. All those in favor? Three. Opposed? Three to one. Good. The next one is a highway block grant, uh, which is $590,170, of which the state will contribute $316,231. The effect is 8.2 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. Good. I have a motion. Also move that we go ahead with that. Second. All Second. in favor? Unanimous. <laughs> and the next one, Mr. Chairman, is the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. This is an annual article. Yeah, it's for $300,000 to be added to the reserve fund for future use in reconstruction of, of streets. So moved, Mr. Chairman. That's a standard article every year. I'll second it. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Next article, Mr. Chairman, is the DPW purchases for vehicles. Um, we have in this particular article one one ton dump truck with plow and wing, two, two, two three quarter ton trucks with plows, two sidewalk maintenance vehicles. Uh, the cost is $243,165. That's uh, mm -hmm. 7.2 cents per thousand dollars valuation. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, have an amendment to take this money out of the unassigned fund balance. I'll let you speak to your motion. Um, because of all these, you know, I've gone through today and all these things, they're very small, but right now we're asking to take about two, almost $2.7 million of a tax effect. And also the length of the ballot 
is long. We all know the reasoning why it's long is through no fault of or any reflection of anything that is currently happening. But at the same time, these things are all very important. And the trucks specifically, the vehicles for public works, I think have been a long time coming. And I want to see public works get what they need to function, as we say the same thing with the Hampton Police Department and the Fire Department. And we were, we did have an article that I was willing to support for the town to uh, purchase a piece of property for 525000 that was going to come from the unassigned fund balance, which would have, to me, been considered as an investment back into the town. But that did not pass. So I would like to instead have this money come from the unassigned fund balance. I want to ask Fred what, what that would do. Have you a rough calculation um, for the drawdowns on the UFB? Because I don't want to get too low on that. Well, there's currently $7.6 million in there, so we're not jeopardizing the fund. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. You know, I don't want to end up where you were in 2007. I guarantee you I won't let that happen. So. <laughs> it's it's the last kooky thing I'm going to, it's the last kooky thing I'm going to suggest right. to the board tonight. All right, the last kooky I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, like that. I'll so second you. Do have a motion and a second? On the UFB. All right, all those in favor? Wait, wait, let's. Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So, these are trucks you absolutely need. Yes. Um, the uh, six-wheel dump truck is, it's, it's age, it's condition, um, it goes to uh, the amount uh, that's another article. That's the other. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my first comment is that that one six wheel ton truck with plow and wing should be stricken from the article. It is. It is in the actual. It is in this one. The one we have right in front of us now, it has the this the the updated one. We the have. updated one since last Friday to now is now okay. So it doesn't have it in. Right. right. That's another. That's okay. another. <laughs> um, the one ton that it would replace has essentially been deadlined already, uh, and the two three-quarter ton tr trucks, the frames are gone in them. So, I mean, yes, on those particular pieces of equipment, they're at the end of their any useful life. The two sidewalk uh, maintenance vehicles, as I think I spoke to the board before, uh, one of them cost like 110000 to purchase, and another one's 120. To be honest with you, uh, just for doing sidewalks, too, too expensive of a piece of equipment uh, when you compare it to the cost of a one ton. I mean, you can buy a six wheel dump truck for what you can buy this for. And the six wheel dump truck has all year round usage, which the other piece of equipment really doesn't. And they've been very uh, hard to maintain. So we're looking to phase those pieces of equipment out. Uh, Mary Louise is continually uh, Nagging. No, no, no. It's it's a it's a it, it, it is one of those things that you you pay critical attention to, and I understand we all have these things, and and in some respects you are right. There are too many pieces of equipment that don't have the versatility. Um, so at, over time, let's pair those out. Let's let's streamline the department. Yeah. Not only and and so, and you look at my budget this year. I'm over on overtime, grease, and the three other lines, vehicle maintenance in all three departments, and this is directly related to it. So if the article doesn't go forward, you know, some of those maintenance lines stay at it. One of them is 100000 the other one's 70000 It just, we're just going to keep, we're going to spend 243 next year in maintenance so right, if we don't start. But what, what is your plan to do with the two sidewalk maintenance vehicles? Those, all these, as it says in here, uh, with your concurrence, as we enter, as we get bids, as we put these things out, we would be turning these pieces of equipment in for as much credit or as, as much uh, relief. So are you saying we're not going to do the sidewalks? We're not going to clear our sidewalks? Oh, no, I'm not saying that at all. We would, be, we would end up replacing these two sidewalk tractors yeah. with other tractors, basically tractors that are more useful, the ones that I'm kind of focused in on at the moment, and we're looking at six different ones. Uh, UNH uses six of them uh, f for their sidewalk maintenance. Yeah. Right, so oh, you, Jim, oh. you, you talked about, you said the three-quarter ton trucks, that the, the frames are already gone. 
have to go back to my little blue sheets here. Yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, but I mean, so you couldn't even maintain those, could you? I mean, who's, who's yeah, gonna... unit 30, the one ton truck, um, a 2002 Ford F 450. Yeah, with 76,000 miles on it, it's been benched, meaning that it's too costly to continue. So I don't even have it available to me for this winter's work. Um, let's see if I get to the two other trucks. And I've got too much paper, <laughs> I have to admit. I believe you said the other you can just day. summarize. I mean, really? yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean I'm, I'm just I'm just putting out just so the people understand right. that these are absolutely necessarily yeah, absolutely need to be right. done. It's not something that's a frivolous uh, buy or something like right. that. The, the other two, two, the other two, two trucks, trucks in the four. same situation. Yeah, that had rusted frames yeah. on is what he had said. And I, I would uh, I would uh, is there a second on that amendment yet? So, so yeah. like, hasn't made a motion well, yet. Make, she, made, she made the motion. I made a motion, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll second her motion for the okay. amendment. Right. Thank you. I still want to. Go ahead. May we ask Mr. Jacobs, please, to have totals on the screen at the deliberative session showing the amount of money you're sinking into mm -hmm. maintenance, uh, even if it's just for those, what, five vehicles or whatever. Right. So the public can get an idea. Either you pay that out and crummy vehicles, or you get new ones where you have better performance. So yes. right now we've had a motion to take this out of the uh, undesignated fund balance. Do we have a motion to pass this warrant article on? But we haven't voted on the amendment yet, have we? No. no. OK. All right, let's, all right, you're right. So I have a motion. So the amendment? To, okay. to take it out of the undesignated fund balance. Yeah, I'm second. Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. So now, as amended, the 243 for the vehicles, uh, and it's coming out of the undesignated mm -hmm. fund balance. I'll make a motion that we take it out. The, the 243,165 yeah. yeah. uh, out of the uh, uh, Second yeah. by Mary Louise. Yeah, I'll second. All those in made, favor? I kept oh. my notes. I, I checked off the vehicles on my list, <laughs> so we know which ones are coming. Yes. All right. Thank you. So unanimous. Yes. So the next one we have is uh, the lease purchase second year approval. And now, oh, yes. I know there was some question of whether this needed to be done or not. That's for the max. The Department of Revenue has suggested oh. that they would like it if this article were submitted. They're not saying it's required. They have suggested. <laughs> um, if that's the case, then the money comes out of the budget and goes into this warrant article, the regular budget. Okay. That would have to be decreased. If the article did not pass, then uh, the default budget would have no effect in these vehicles that we've we're in the process of paying $124,000 for in year one. We would lose the money and the vehicles would go back immediately. Oh, God. Because this is based upon a lease purchase and this has a failure to appropriation clause in it. I would, I would think that we would not put that on, leave it as is the 124 or 128,000 is already per this year's vote in the budget. So either way, we'll have that money sitting in the budget. Uh, do you think that's reasonable, Fred? I don't want to take it's, that. It's currently in both sides of the budget. It's 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 in the regular budget because it's a regular budget. It's a regular expense. Well, it's already item. voted on. Right. Right. It's already voted on by the town, uh, and it's also in the default budget. Should should the regular budget fail to pass, mm -hmm. if you accept this article, then the money in the regular budget will be removed. Yeah, I don't want to tinker with this any more than we have to. What, what, because it was suggested that we, was it mildly suggested, strongly <laughs> suggested? I mean, it was just suggested. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing lease purchases for many years in, the, yeah. in New Hampshire, and I have never yet placed a warrant article for the second or third right. or fourth year or fifth year. Yeah. But their suggestion is they want to see all lease purchases have warrant articles for every single year the lease purchase money is, is going out. Well, then they can they can warn us ahead of time before we put another one on. But Correct. as far as I'm concerned, pull it. I'll move that we pull that article. A motion to pull this article? Yep. Is there a second? 
Yeah, I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. I took care of that. Um, replace the culverts. <laughs> Tuck Field and Eaton Park cost us two hundred and forty six thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, the it's seven point three cents per thousand dollars evaluation. And I'll let our public works director give you the wherewithal on this one. Talking three culverts, I think. Yeah. Um, two weeks ago, this was two articles. Tuck field separate right. from Eaton Park. Uh, to be honest with you, they're, they're both in the same bathtub, um, so we put them both together. Uh, no sense in confusing the issue. Although they are, you could literally do one side of the, the park and yeah. literally then have to pick up the equipment and do the other side of the park. Yeah. So at first, that's why they were looked at as two um, separate issues. I think the main point to understand is the drainage from this building due south <coughs> all passes through Tuck Field. On a regular basis, um, the water comes out of the catch basins down uh, at Tuck Field, uh, the parking lots in particular, um, right up out of the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's hydro what we call hydraulically surcharged. Uh, the problem is um, we have two pipes going into one pipe the same size. You just can't uh, never should have been taxed that way, mm. uh, can't handle the flow. So it'll continue to cause uh, problems. And uh, this also addresses the major culvert under Park Ave, which um, is a uh, metal pipe. We've seen all of our metal pipes in town uh, erode, mm. dissolve, yeah. fail uh, due to uh, acid rain. Uh, it's just a matter of time. So while we're in there, we combine both of these projects together mm -hmm. to get a better uh, bang for our buck, in other words, uh, to be able to attract a contractor that would give us a fair and reasonable price. Is, is it fair to say that you, while you correct this problem, combining the two projects, if you will, mm -hmm. this means longer life in the future because you shouldn't have to go back True. again for rusted out pipes and all that right. stuff. <coughs> You'll do one coordinated project. <coughs> Yes, and, and you know, part of doing these projects together, the, it talks about King's Kingdom and all those things, um, is that Park Ave is on our plan to uh, pave. It's, it gets a lot of uh, vehicular traffic, a lot of pedestrian traffic, and um, in all honesty, I can't really step forward and want to pave the, this road uh, with those culverts uh, in this condition. Right. It would be a, a poor investment. Of so one lump sum project, right. and you cure that for we'll get it done. years. Yes. I'll move that we go ahead with this. You might, uh, people might want to understand that this, these particular pipe, pipes take all the drainage, not just in uh, the park area, but they, High Street, Toll Avenue, Academy Avenue, Tuck Field, Park Avenue, and Winnicott Road mm -hmm. all drain through these three pipes. Right. And it will be so stipulated in the article. It's already it's, in the article. But right. I want people to understand this takes in a whole area of the community. And the drains, the amount of water in there is very, very high. The yes. ground is surcharged. Yeah. Excellent. Jim, do you have any questions? Yeah, and, 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 and right now, it's, you say, yeah, I mean, is it a safety issue? That was picked up. But you said, talk about the traffic that's going over that road. You're talking about the school yep. buses going over there. Yes. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, are we, are we talking safety here? We are. I mean, we've we're, I wasn't here then, but I mean, you've had a fire truck fall through on was it High Street? Five a, corners. A, a metal pipe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The metal pipes over in Green and Gentian are Swiss yeah. cheese. Um, we're seeing it all. Uh, Brad Street, that one collapsed, not within the last year. So yes, this it's a. It's a, it's a critical street. I think it's a, mm -hmm. a, a juncture street where mm -hmm. everybody comes through. Yeah. And um, especially with its proximity to the school, to the park system, mm -hmm. it is of a very high priority. Mm -hmm. And Chris, you will be using the new um, pipe, not, not the old. Everything's probably going to be the uh, either a PVC pipe PVC or a pipe. high density polyethylene. Yeah. So any culverts? Is there a motion? Yes. I'll so move that we put it on the warrant. 
I'll second. Is. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before you vote, I would just, I think there's an, an, a correction to be noted. Under the words Toll Avenue, it says as the current culvert is undersized, because we're talking to it would be culverts are. Uh. Oh, okay. Remember, we're talking both sides. So coming out of Park Ave, coming out of Park parking lot and under <laughs> from Eaton Park. That's right, Okay. Can can we stipulate the PVC pipe in there just to make the public happier I, I because they know about the other pipes rotting? I think we make leave it up to them to the they're, pipe. They're, 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 they're the ones that decide pipe. what the best one is. I'm not going to tell them which pipe to use. Yeah, just the ones. Yeah, that or if he knows that's what he's that's what he's been putting in. Yeah. So. Might make the public happier. We don't, we don't have any clay pipe or or. I have very little metal pipe in my yard. And so. Good. So we have a motion and a second for this Warren article. Do you need a, Do you need anything changed? Uh, just that uh, we're making it as the current culverts are undersized. Did they decide there was two or there's one? There's multiple in that okay. area. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So with the I'll so make right. a motion with the amendment. Yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Good. Thank you. So the next one is the uh, lease purchase plow truck. <laughs> Needing numbers for that? Is it? That one says, it says 29 on here. But we have a, a number of, uh, for a, uh, I'll read it, shall the town of Hampton vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter a five year lease purchase agreement for a Mack six wheel dump truck with plow, patrol wing, That's and stainless steel yeah. sander yeah. in the amount of $210,050. And to raise and appropriate the sum of $42,010 to fund said lease purchase for one year of said lease purchase agreement shall contain a non appropriation clause. The numbers are correct. Go ahead. So, no. like with the other vehicles, can you put in, um, please, that X amount of dollars have been expended repairing? The one. At the deliberative session, yes, and, and, and with our online presentations, we can do yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Oh, go ahead. So this is a five-year lease. Yes. Mm -hmm. Will we run into the same problem we just did with the other one the, on the second year that is exactly as long as identical? Make, as long as you make the same decision not to. There's no problem because we wait, said wait, 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 wait. I'm asking him and I'm asking Fred. Not you, Mary Louise. Thank well, you. I thought right from the beginning that this is worded properly. Yeah. And it's worded the way the one was last year. That okay. it was that the voters knew that it was a mm -hmm. multiple year lease and yeah. that they knew that it came with five payments of one twenty four for yeah. the two trash trucks. And I think this one is equally as clear and agree with the board's previous decision not to go ahead with the Okay. Refunding. Good. As long as we're, as long as we clear on what we're doing, and we're yes. confident that we're not mm -hmm. going to run into a the, problem. The article yet. wording complies with DES regulations. Okay. And the reason we're putting in the lease purchase is to keep the taxes low. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. The next one we have is the purchase of a ejection trash trailer. I have one quick question that I, I didn't. We already have six. Um, I know that you need, you probably need the uh, extra storage mm -hmm. so you don't have to dump everything on the ground and with all the stuff at the beach. Um, I'm hoping that at some point we can tell the state to take its own trash someplace. But in the meantime, it's not. this is not going to replace one of the existing no. trailers. So um, you, you literally need everything you've got. Memorial Day, especially July 4th weekend, yes. Independence Day, and yeah. Labor Day, we um, play a huge shell game yeah. with trying to um, store enough, you know, the recyclables and the trash. In a number of instances, I know it's occurred at least three times that I can recall yeah. off the top of my head, we've had to dump the recycling on the ground yeah. out back so we could fill yeah. it with refuse. Yeah. Um, because we're literally one trailer short. Yeah, okay. Um, so depending on how or when the, f the holiday falls, 
uh, can it, it causes a real problem for us. Okay. There's there room for some of the people from Concord in that trailer? I wouldn't touch that question <laughs> with a 10 foot. So we, does anybody want to make a motion on this one? I'll so move that we uh, I'll second. second All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one is the replacing of the water line at DPW. And we talked extensively about this a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And I think uh, it only makes sense after, especially after we've had a couple. Also of move if you will accept that. All right. I'll second. Is there a second? Any other questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. The LED street lights. Talked about that last week, we, didn't we? We talked about yes. that two weeks ago. Extensively. I'll move that. That's a great I'll one. I'll second that. Any Just other cook. questions? I'm good with All those in favor? Unanimous. Sidewalk Capital Reserve Fund. I, I'll, I, I'm opposed to that, so I'll move that we withdraw it. I'll second that motion. I'll All right, wait, wait. Discussion. Can we have some? Can we have some explanation of this, or somebody? Talk I'll explain. On it? If you want me to? We got roads falling apart. I'd rather have repair the roads than fiddle around this, with more sidewalks. Is, is this a DPW? I have to admit that I took full responsibility of drafting this particular warrant article in the form that it's in. Um, $26,000 a year for sidewalk maintenance uh, is a drop in the bucket. My concern and, and the reason why I brought this forward is we can be sued by anybody under the Americans with Disabilities Act for noncompliance. We are in a strong case of noncompliance everywhere downtown, along High Street, um, I can think of in front of the TD Bank, between the High Street lot and TD Bank, uh, down in front of the 401, I got a sidewalk, that, a crosswalk that butts right into vertical granite curbing on both sides. And I've got similar, so I have other similar situations in town. This town can be sued by anyone, and you don't have to be disabled to be sued. By the, I believe wholeheartedly that if we are making an earnest effort to take some of these off the list, um, a reasonable court would say the town is working within its financial capabilities and gets this done. We were hoping to use this, set this capital reserve fund up so that every year sidewalks, crosswalks would get done along with those major road projects. Mm -hmm. Right now, if I use the only other course or remedy is to maintain less roads and, and t start stripping out of the road improvement fund more money for sidewalks and or the crosswalks. Um, when I got here, there was a lot of um, comment, concern, criticism, if you will, of the department that we give you 25000 a year for trees and you don't take any down with it. I've taken down, I think, 200 in the last two yeah. years. Yeah. So the tree budget is finally going to trees. <laughs> the same thing's been said repeatedly about s sidewalks and crosswalks. You have this measly $26,000, and um, half the time, like this year, we're not spending it. We've been so busy with sewer and other things that we're just not spending it. So guess what? It never gets put to where it needs to go. So the idea of a capital reserve fund was mine so that it can be uh, um, funded year after year after year, and these things can methodically be done, dealt with. Mark, on the Sioux thing, on the ADA, can you speak to that? Uh, well, I don't want to give anyone any ideas, but <laughs> I already, uh, he's a <laughs> there's, a, there's a good case to be made for preventative measures when we know that we're not in compliance. Right. I mean, Chris is 100% correct. That this that that could end up costing us a heck of a lot more money than a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Yes, the one case that occurred up in Tilton that was over a sidewalk that was accepted by the a state sidewalk that was accepted by the town uh, cost several hundred thousand dollars in legal fees alone. Can I explain well, my second? Let let right. her. She's supposed to. 
Number one, I don't want to see sidewalk money both in a warrant article and in the regular budget, as it has for a number of years. Number two, the private petition article for a sidewalk on Mesa Road last year had a figure of $500,000 in it. Number three, this town was established in 1638. And too bad. If we don't have sidewalks, I'm willing to take the risk. That's a stupid I statement. would take it out. Well, it is. Regina. Regina. All right, ADA. all right, all right. That's Regina. Regina. It's ADA, and it should be in the budget. So if we need approximate, if we want to start it with 100000 then I say that it should be in the DPW budget for $100,000. Mm. If it's got to be done annually, it's got to be done annually. Well, I mean, these separate warrant articles is driving everyone nuts. I'm sorry, but things got taken out of the budget years ago for no rhyme or reason, and we are making it up for it now, and we have 50 warrant articles, okay. and things don't get passed because we have 50 warrant articles. ADA is very important. We know someone that doesn't like to do ADA, the state, and look what happened to them. The money should be in the budget because it's something that should be required, and I would make a motion that this 100000 should be put into the public works budget. I want to add one more thought here. Put $100,000 in the budget, it's going to take you five years to save up just to do the Mace Road project. Just think about that. I, you know, I, I think this is frankly ridiculous, and we've got more to do maintaining the existing sidewalk. And I think that's part of what this does. So I want. Yeah, I want. motion this, in a I second. Would, All right, hey, hang on. I would go along with taking this out if it's going to be put in the budget. I'll make a budget. Budget's not yours. Budget's not ours. To do, so. This year, anyhow. Right. Yeah. So we take this out, and it's not put in the budget, then <clears throat> not, there's no chance of anything happening. You have zero dollars in the budget for sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Right. So as Chris yeah, said, we're not making a good effort. Could be proven. So I, I'm against taking this out. I'm opposed to the article. So we have a, mo a, a motion and a second to remove this from the thing. All those in favor? To remove, to remove this article from the From the warrant. Mark. Yes. Okay. Yes. All, all those in favor. favor? All those opposed? Two to two, the motion fails because of the lack of, because Rick's not here. Right, yeah. So. This isn't going to fly, so we, that's all right. Is there any other motions? Nope. Oh, I make a motion that, that we go ahead with this. Is there a second? I will second it. Is you going to get the same result? Well, yeah. and that's what I we know, get. No, we're we doing it the right way. Not get the same result. We're doing it the right way, and that's yeah. why we do this. That's all right. So we have a motion and a second to, to forward this along. All those in favor? Opposed? You have two and one, so the motion carries. And I'm going to abstain, abstain until I am able to talk for the budget committee. All right. this. So we have, so for now it, it, it continues right. on. Two one one. Two one one. Yes. Household has its waste collection, twenty thousand dollars. This provides enough funds according to public works to do two yeah. collections during the year. Yeah, I was also moved that we put that on the warrant. Any Second. other any other questions on it? All those in favor? Unanimous. Complete cemetery building is the next article. The, the appropriation request is $11,000. Also move, Mr. Chairman, and the money comes out of the cemetery fund. Yes. We have a motion. Second. Second. Any other questions? No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Is, if Chris and Jen are going to, are they all done with their warrant articles? Yep. I yeah. just have a question. Is it okay if I ask? Sure, go ahead. Um, I was I missed the flooding workshops last week that you had, one for down the main beach and one for uh, North Beach. Right. I was wondering. A lot of people have asked me. I guess you handed out a survey with yes. questions. Is that going to be made available for people that were not able to come to the meeting? Jen can answer that because she handed them out and Jen, she's been collecting them. There were two surveys done. One for each of the group meetings. One of them has been uh, turned into a survey monkey. So I will be putting the link on uh, the town's website so anybody can go and answer the questions for us and then the consultants will 
uh, go through it. We also have meeting minutes for each of the meetings also posted to the site, uh, and that's where we'll hopefully be providing the updates. Uh, we did receive a lot of email and phone numbers to be added to the call alls and the um, email blasts that we do. Uh, there will be some emails coming back from me where they will have to go register themselves for the email. Uh, because of privacy laws, I can't register them. They have to consent uh, to get the email. Uh, but anybody at home, um, feel free to check the page, and we'll show you how to uh, sign up for those. Excellent. Thank you, Deputy. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Deputy Joe. The next one we have is the purchase of a water <laughs> tractor for the cemetery. I will so move that we put that on the warrant. Once again, that's coming out of the cemetery fund. I'll second it. Any questions? All in favor? Unanimous. I'll so move Article 37 on the warrant, cemetery tree removal, once again, coming out of the cemetery trust fund. Second. I have a question. Didn't we pass this a couple of years ago and then they didn't do it? Uh, about yeah, five years ago, we passed at their request an article for $50,000 for the cemetery on Winnicott Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, the week before they were due to cut, they removed the authority to cut. Um, this is for the High Street Cemetery. <coughs> and it's so bad that, in fact, some of the gravestones are actually being yeah. lifted out of the ground by the trees. Yeah. So we have to we have to do something to solve some of those problems. Mm -hmm. And they've agreed that they need to do this this year. Mm -hmm. And it probably will continue for years in the future yeah. until they get the trees out that are endangering yeah. the graves. And there are new trustees now. <coughs> True. May I make a request? Yep. When I ask a question of the town manager, the town manager answer me. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Unanimous. Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund, $124,750. Uh, this is for a number of items uh, that, in fact, uh, are requested by the Recreation Department. The funds come, the money comes from an individual fund that has no tax impact in the town. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's it's. 20% of the revenues from the individual parking lots at the mm -hmm. beach. Does this have the updated figure from when he came in a couple of weeks ago when he needed something? Uh, he, he was asked to give me an additional figure if he needed it. I don't have it, so I'm assuming this is the correct figure. Okay. I'll move Article 38 to the warrant. Second. No tax impact. Any questions? All those no. in favor? Unanimous. The next one is the information IT. technology upgrades, and this is a decrease from this year which I believe was $120,000, are asking for $71,668 for uh, technology uh, infrastructure systems, including software, hardware, and services for police, fire, public works, and other town departments, and to replace and upgrade computers and other equipment, upgrade the town office phone system and equipment with a voice over IP system, and to purchase and upgrade the vision assessing database software all necessary services and support. The total is $71,668. Mr. Chairman, I'll move Article 39 as is to the warrant. I will second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, same thing with Article 40, Mr. Chairman, Human Service Agencies. It's a standard article. And just just for that. clarification, all of these have been passed in previous years, and that's why we've We've lumped mm -hmm. them all together. That is correct. There is one new one, which is, uh, I have to figure out which one it is. There's so many of them on here. <laughs> is it task? No, it's one Sky Community Services. Yes. yes. It was added last year by voter under a warrant article by the town. Okay. Yeah. And, Ms., uh, Mr. Chair, uh, town manager. Sir, we get reports on these, right? We, I have a stack like mm -hmm. this upstairs yeah. of all our annual reports. Yeah. That, yeah. They're sent in. Uh, not necessarily on December 31st, but as their fiscal year's end. Yeah. So we yeah. receive them during the Sounds entire year. Okay. Thank so you. we have a motion. Mary Louise made the yeah. motion. Regina seconded. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I'll move Article 41, as is the electronic formatting paper documents, to finish up the job. I'll second that motion. No, it's not a finish up of the job. It's that we're continuing well, the to job. to continue, continue with right. the job. So a motion, second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. 
I'll move Article 42, as is the public police forfeiture special revenue fund. That does not come out of taxes. Second. Motion. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Move Article 43, the town office inside front doors to match the replaced uh, outside doors that have been a big help, especially to handicapped and older people. I'll second that motion. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, Fred, on that front door, sir, is, is it working properly now? It is. Okay. Is, yep. is, are we satisfied with the equipment that they put in or? The equipment is functioning. We just have to learn how to operate it. Okay. <laughs> Better. All right. uh, we had an incident last week that we couldn't get the door adjusted, yeah. couldn't get it closed. They came out, took a look at it, adjusted it, and, and told us what the problem was. Uh -huh. We're now knowledgeable about that problem so we can take care of it ourselves so that that should happen again. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's handy because people can, particularly the handicapped folks, can just get in the building. Now, we, the inside door is tough for them because it's not automatic. Right. It doesn't open. It's got a hand pull on it. Yeah. Uh, so if we change the inside door at this time, we didn't have the money to do it all last year. Uh, that will help an awful lot for handicapped people. Yeah. Good. So a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, Article 44, a new request, Naval Committee Fund. Uh, and uh, I will so move that we place that on the warrant with the $10,000 starter money. And that comes from the reserve fund. Right. So second? I will second that. All those in favor? Oh, shit. oh question. Sorry. Number one, on the new committee that's been set up, they're looking for members, right? They are looking Mike for Ed members. Mike Edgar has, they're looking for members, and they've not found, they've not had a lot of people step forward, have that's they? That's correct. That's correct, and he's, and they're a little, what they're going to do if they don't get the people. Well, I think one of the reasons they're not getting the people is because everybody was taking the money out of their own pockets to do this for our submarines that are dedicated to the town, mm -hmm. uh, and this would eliminate that problem, so... Uh, this is more a matter of just public service for the uh, the naval people who are frequent in the community. All right, are we gonna are we gonna begin to limit the who we're gonna take? Or are we gonna take every submarine that comes in? I mean, we did well, the Hampton, <laughs> and I'm we not being asked. <laughs> yeah, we were asked by the Navy Department to yeah. take the Virginia, yeah. and I think that's probably until the Hampton returns, or maybe some sister ship that's related to the Hampton or something comes back which may not be for five or six years, yeah. but we would have some money in the kitty for that. This would okay. be a continuing yeah. fund. Right. But I also think it's a, it's a feather in, the, in this town's yeah. cap that we've Absolutely. been asked to do this because yeah. of, uh, of, of what we did for the USS Hampton. Yeah. Well, and I, I won't mention any towns, but uh, the USS Virginia actually asked the Navy Department to ask us mm -hmm. to have the town of Hampton sponsor nice. them while they're here. They like us. And, they, and we do get work out of, <laughs> out of these guys. I mean, when we've had uh, projects like the uh, Kids Kingdom or some yeah. of the various other projects we've had, they've come down, they've been super. Uh, they were actually down for the Christmas parade. Uh, so anytime, I'm sure in the summer, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get some competitive softball games <laughs> with the police fire and, and against the, the, the guys something like that, but I'm sure we can get some work out of them yeah. as, as service projects for them too. So, Regina? I think it's a great cause, but as the selectman rep, I was asked to be the selectman representative and I accepted, but I was just happening to look on the town calendar and it said that they had a meeting last week. Is that? I don't know. It was I don't up, know. Well, I just want to make sure, but because I never knew anything about it. So yeah. I just want, you know, if there is any scheduled meetings, please email me mm -hmm. I'm not in a habit of looking at that town calendar on a regular basis I just happened to glance at it <clears throat> for another reason and I saw it scheduled on there so all right so we have a motion and a second all those in favor unanimous mr. chairman I will move article 45 the no smoking ordinance and I really like the no smoking ordinance so we have a motion we have a second Fred did a good job is there a second well, it's second just for discussion. Second for discussion. Go ahead. All right. You know, last year we did the beach, mm -hmm. right, which I think is great. And I think I'm totally, I hate smoking. I hate seeing the butts on the street. But the, the, I'm not sure I want to go this far. I'm not sure there's some liberties that people have. So I'm not, I'm not positive that I'm comfortable going with all public property. I just, I don't know. 
to have yeah. a statement too. I somewhat agree with Jim. I think it's a good idea. I think the littering is awful with cigarettes. I think that's pretty much the number one problem. Uh, but I think one problem we have with this is that the state doesn't have this ordinance. And I think the biggest problem we have that people complain about is actually happening on state property, <clears throat> not on our own beaches. So I feel like it would be a lot easier for us to have this if we had where the problem is, if that was also an ordinance. I just think that doing it on, and then also the whole town property thing, I'm not sure I agree with. So I don't know if I want to move this one forward. Just, just a quick follow up. Uh, this is not a money article, and I would like to get the feel, a feel, from the public, from the voters. It, it's not going to be a big problem for them to read it and understand it. So at least it will give us a, like a survey, it will give us a feel for how the public uh, looks on this problem. So do we have to have a recommendation by the board where it's... Where You're it's not required, you only make, you're required to make recommendations on money out you, you can make recommendations. You can make recommendations. We can. Make, make, no, we can. Right. We can. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. But where it's not a citizen's petition article, does it have to come from the Board of Selectmen, or, or does it? Well, that's my... Well, that's if, if the Selectmen don't place it, then you'll have to wait for a citizen's petition to place it. All right. Matt? Yep. Can we place it and then take the recommendation after... I mean, if, 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 if two vote against it, not recommending it. Does, can it still be placed? No. No. You have to have a majority of the board of selectmen to vote to place it. Okay. What's it going to hurt to get a get a survey from the public on the spot with no money involved? Just let them. Well, there, there is some money involved as far as cleaning up the messes, but who will enforce it? I mean, I just guess I don't understand. Like, if someone's smoking a cigarette on a town property, they're going to call. The police, and then how is the po are the police going to be able to get there while they're still smoking a cigarette? Like to me, it's just an ordinance that can't be enforced, and I just I'm just not I'm against it. I'm sorry. I I just I just think that what Regina said, the state the beach doesn't the state property does not have this. You know, if, if no. it were more of an overall, I, I just I mean I agree 100 percent with our beach. I agree too. Yeah. Pass, pass that 100%. Uh, you have no ordinance regarding the beach. Didn't we last year? No, you took an advisory position. <laughs> there was no ordinance enacted, so that's not an ordinance, and therefore it's not enforceable if somebody smokes on the beach. Mm -hmm. yeah, who's going to enforce it? I, I, you, you have nothing to lose. Let the public vote. Let them express themselves, yes or no. So we have a motion to move this article forward. It has been seconded for discussion. All those in favor? Those opposed? Wait, wait. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> All those in favor? Those opposed? Those abstain? All abstain. So this article will be removed. Let the public decide. Don't lose but it, Fred. Abstain. That's a good article. It is a good article. Well. So. Repeal. Next one is the repeal of false alarm fees. We currently, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we currently have false alarm fees for fire and police false alarms. The general laws of this state make it a crime to, to put in a false alarm. Um, we, and we don't have the ability to assess fees. It's a criminal matter and has to be referred to the police department if somebody issues a false alarm, yeah. regardless of the circumstances. So I have a motion. So it's unenforceable at right. the town level. I will so move that we place this on we the have warrant. A second. All those in favor? Police, unanimous. Um, Paid police deal, detail costs? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this uh, we currently have a plus 30% to take into consideration uh, our retirement costs and, and the other costs that we have to pay for an officer who is on duty. Uh, this particular amendment means that if a person's on a police paid detail, the person who hired them for the detail pays for the cost for those items. The problem is that 30% we're losing money, and we've been asked by finance to increase it to 50%, which is more closely related to what the cost is. Right. I'll so move that we put it on the warrant as is, and it should uh, help.
help with revenue. Second. Yes. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 48, Fund 21 balance to do the general fund. Um, I will move that we put that uh, on the warrant as is. I'll second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. That's it. Now, Article 49, Conservation Land, uh, vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $55,000, uh, which uh, Barbara and uh, Jay just explained mm -hmm. to us at the beginning of the meeting. Right. Uh, that's a wonderful um, uh, article to preserve some natural land in this community. $55,000 is a pretty slim Yes. Uh, cost for 70 acres of land yes. in Hampton. Yes, and in a critical spot, too. So I will so move so we have a motion, that on. Motion seconded. Yep. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And Article 50, the Christmas Parade. That's a petition. That's a petition warrant article for the 2019 Christmas Parade. Right. And I move that we put that on as is. I'll second that. All those in favor? Unanimous. That's it. That's it. Until petition articles come in. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I just have a couple things under old business, if it's okay. And we'll need the planning board articles on there, oh, which we, we won't have to worry we got about. A couple of other things. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. The next thing under old business, we have the uh, board of selectmen's meeting schedule. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, I will move that the meeting schedule is every other Monday for the whole year, except for the holidays. And uh, if the board chooses to set up every other Monday in the month of July, uh, or possibly the month of July and August, I will swallow that. But we have a job to do here. And okay, I- just, just explain that to me again, what you- what Well, I have, every other Monday, unless there's a holiday, an official holiday. And if it's uh, the uh, intention of the board to have a little time in the summer, do every other week in July and August. Other than that, leave the full schedule as we used to do you, in the you old days. Saying, you, but you're saying doing every other Monday. week Every other Monday. I'm sorry. I, it's, I don't mean every other Monday. Every, That's why I wanted every, to be clear. Yes, thank you for clarifying. Every Monday mm -hmm. except for the holidays. And take every other Monday off in July and August to give people a little break. But we really need to get in here and get some work done. You know, if you look at the, the memo that was given to us yes. by the... Um, there were... Uh, in the 2009 schedule, she posted it, mm -hmm. and if, if we went to a, um, and our, let's see. We had 37 meetings, 38 meetings with the delivery session in 2018. Right. And then if we had adopted a bi-weekly, it would have been 30 meetings with 31, so it would have right. been very few meetings that you were missing. Right. right. That's what and this year... She said if it would continue, uh, we'll hold 40 meetings in 41. With the delivery session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's going with a uh, modified schedule. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll read right here. Uh, in January, you'll have three meetings because one of those is Civil Rights Day. Uh, February, you'll have two meetings and one of those is President's Day. March, you will have three meetings. April, you will have three meetings. Mm, May, know. you'll have two meetings. June, you'll have two meetings. July, you'll have three meetings. Oh, mm. Three meetings, yep. August, you will have two meetings. September, you will have two meetings, one uh -huh. of those being Labor Day. Uh, October, You'll have three meetings, one of those being Columbus Day. November, you'll have three meetings, one of those being Veterans Day. And in December, you'll have three meetings, one of those being the Christmas holiday. So Mr. Chairman, that is a modified schedule as, as it was proposed, and I believe that's what you proposed. Yes, and Christina uh, put it in a little bit 
clarified it a little bit yes. for me. Let me just, especially referring to August, because we as a board were very late this year getting together on our proposed budget. So that will mean that we'll be working on the proposed budget for 2020, and we need more time than two meetings in August. Well, I, 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 uh, I, I don't think the, the, our budget schedule showed that in fact we, everything got done it was done in a timely manner and it got to the budget committee in plenty of time so um, I think that was uh, it was done in plenty of time so Regina. we mix budget meetings in with the regular weekly meetings that's no way to do a budget we should be sitting there focusing just on the budget at the meetings and, and we have many as we did in the old days and a lot of things happened in the old days and we're yes. paying for it now yeah. some of them are pretty good i think that uh just coming here to meet on a weekly basis is not necessarily the best way to get things done i think giving management the selectmen and anyone who has concerns about agenda items or things they would like to see on the agenda at the board of selectmen meeting allowing them more than merely three or four days to get that prepared on a weekly basis will allow for us to accomplish more things in a timely manner, including the budget. And I would like, I think my motion last time included that we would still meet on an as-needed basis right. during as, the budget, as, as we always have done. So if we needed to meet twice a week, I'm sure we would find a way to do that. But so I would like to go with that, a motion for that proposed schedule 19. that we received. Do we have a second? We have a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Three, four, I'm opposed, opposed, one yep. opposed. Now we have a, an agreement for professional planning assistance with the RPC for the Cable Renewal Committee. Should we explain that? Yes, sir. Chairman's here. Cable Renewal Committee, uh, part of the cable renewal is getting public input. So we we're trying to figure the best way to get public input about uh, how they feel. And we came up with a, a variety of uh, questions uh, that to present. And we were going to go to looking at different websites for, to do surveys that would do a survey to give you all the information and stuff. And uh, Ann Carnaby came in and said that the RPC, the Bre uh, Rockingham uh, Planning Commission, is doing that now, I mm -hmm. think. And that's what we voted last week, uh, $750 right. to uh, address them. So now we have the contract to sign <laughs> that Fred has had. And it's just a vote on that. So it's just to get the public input so we can continue with the renewal process. It's a good idea. I have a question. <clears throat> okay. The problem that I see is that many residents, especially older we, residents. We also will, let me answer that, uh, not to cut you off, we also will have uh, hard copies that can be picked up at the, at the uh, town hall. Yes, because if people don't have a computer. We will have a way of doing that, yes. Excellent. So they could just pick up yep. the yep. survey yep. sheet yep. in the town office. Yep. We just want to make sure that we yep. publicly announce yep. that. And just while we're talking about cable and things like that, as far as uh, Channel 22 goes, I had a couple questions. I spoke with Brian before the meeting. Mm. Some people were having problems with, I guess, on Friday there was nothing on air until about four o'clock and then also with something that used to take up the whole screen I guess is only shown on part of the screen now yeah. but Brian said he's aware of the situation and it is technical difficulties and he is hoping to have it resolved as soon as he can so that will not be something that should continue or people will see for much longer hopefully so do we need an approval would you like an approval for the tentative yeah I'll make the motion that we approve the uh, Fred signing the contract and yes. I'll second it signing the, the tentative agreement with the uh, planning RPC. assistance. The yes. Arrange yes. Good. For the with, for the cable. So all those in favor? Unanimous. Yes. Good. Any other old business? I just yes. have a couple quick things. I just want to let the board know that uh, uh, there's a petition to New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, and it's an effort of the Conservation Law Foundation. The New Hampshire Safe Water Alliance, which is uh -huh. uh, Mindy Mesmer's water advocacy group, uh -huh. and I would just that has gotten sent out to DES um, in regards to looking at the PFAS contaminations, looking at instead of looking at the compounds singularly, looking at them more together Good. and trying to address more of them at one time. So I was just asking that maybe if we could show some support for that. I know I think she's already sent it out, but so we can send it. So you're looking for just a. Just, yeah, just that 
do you think? Support, supports Mindy. And I mean, I personally, I support anything that she has, that she has questions, yeah. she wants to get him to DES, it's pretty much a petition. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to be committing us to uh, the conservation law thing. If that, that, go, if that, that then went to a lawsuit, would we then be part of it? Mm -hmm. We would be if you uh, if you do the wrong thing, you would be part of it, and you would be in federal court. So what are we doing to do the right thing? I think what you need to do is you need to uh, just say that you support the efforts the efforts that are going forward mm -hmm. to uh, to correct the situations that are out there in, in mm -hmm. today's world. Okay, I'll second Regina. To to say we support. support. Yes, yes. 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 Just support. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mm, good. Seeing nothing on the old business. Under new business, Jamie, you want to come up? We have a approval of the tentative agreement for the HPD Patrolman and Sergeants Union. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you know, we've, we've talked before. Um, we're now at that point where we have uh, signed a tentative agreement with the HPA. We're here for the board to officially approve that and move it to the warrant. Uh, I understand you already discussed that a little earlier. Uh, but to go over the TA, um, what we have is, <coughs> excuse me, several language changes, um, but the cost items are um, related to the insurance. Uh, the, there's been an agreement uh, to move from the, the prescription plan that they're on to another prescription plan. You'll recall um, this has been an issue that's been out there for a mm -hmm. period of time. Um, the plan that the HPA is currently on is no longer offered. The other unions have all moved to the new prescription plan. We're doing the same thing with the HPA that we've done with everybody else. Globally, that plan actually saves both parties, them and us, money. We've put a pool of money in there to help offset a transitional period, um, and uh, that's a, a cost item. Uh, the other issues are uh, details, the request to increase the detail pay. Uh, regular details now will move from, I think it's $35 to $40 or the officer's overtime rate, whichever is higher, and it's been an increase in the alcohol detail rate, so that is if you work in a bar or a detail where there's alcohol served, there's an additional sum of money that's added. That's been increased as well to an $8 per hour additional for those. They're, they're relatively infrequent, but they are situations where there is uh, mm. usually um, a higher risk Greater or risk. problem for the officers yeah. they're dealing with things. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, with the wages, it's a three-year deal for 2.8, 2.8, 2.8. Mm -hmm. Within there also is an adjustment to the starting wage to the patrolman and an adjustment to the starting wage of the sergeant, so a first-year sergeant or first-year patrolman. Okay. There's been an adjustment in those wages. Patrolman, obviously, to be more competitive with some of the area or the places we're around. With the mm -hmm. sergeants, we made an adjustment because there was a deficiency uh, in the prior contracts, the way things went, where there were circumstances where there was a sergeant supervisor who was making less money than a, yeah. a, a patrol officer that they were supervising. So we've corrected that to, to deal with that deficiency. Really, that's that's the extent of it. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions from the board? Go ahead. I just want to say I was part of the <coughs> negotiations team this year, and I think it went really well. We had a couple back and forths, and... I think the assistant town manager did a very good job, and I'm glad. Good team. Yeah, good team on both sides. I hope that we can get this passed for our police department. It's very Agreed. important. Jim, when, you, when you talk about the increase in the detail, that the, the bar would be paying that, right? Correct. Those are private details that are paid by <coughs> outside folks. Right, yes. That's where that increase is coming. So that's correct. The yes. employer yeah. picks up the tab. Any other questions? And we're talking two separate articles. One for the patrolman and one for the sergeant. Yes, and the changes are the same. There's just a different, in each of those two mm -hmm. contracts, there's a different article number that's yep. uh, identified in here. Yep. Uh, you costing items, uh, I understand you went through that earlier, so you're aware of the costing items. Um, we've gone through that, you have the warrant article, so uh, I would ask the board to give us a vote. I made a motion that we um, accept the contract. Tentative agreements. Tentative agreements, yeah. Ratified. For both the, the patrolman and the sergeant's union? Yep. I'll second. All right. Is that? Okay. Yeah, that's a, the vote to ratify. The vote to ratify? Okay. So all those in favor? Four? Unanimous. So we're taking the vote on both contracts? Correct. Just to Correct. clarify. Yep. And now that's another thing that we'll have Rick come in tomorrow to see if he can 
So. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. One twenty-eight Ashworth Ave. Bond release. The chairman of the, the planning board has certified that uh, all the requirements of the bond have been met. It's filed in July of 2016. That there are no outstanding issues and are requesting the bond be released. Questions to the board. I'll so move. move. I'll second it. Yep. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Is there anything else under new business? Closing comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would appreciate um, the board uh, moving to go into a non public session uh, under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small e pertaining to litigation us only. I'll make that motion, but could we make a date for Christina to do the, uh, the picture, picture for the yep. Yeah. We also need to know who you want to have de de the report dedicated to. So <laughs> that you can get to me, but. Well, do you want to do it on the January 14th meeting? Oh, we have to do it during the day, correct? Yeah. That's yeah, they're suggesting Monday, uh, some Monday at 10:30. But do we have Aquarian on the 14th? Mm, off the top of my head, I don't believe so. Could be. Because they or coming 15. into. I think we. I have a 10 o'clock appointment with Aquarian upstairs. Yes. Yeah, at the middle of the month. Yeah. Right. right. So you. That's the same. That's the fourth. No. Is you the seventh. Seventh. So the seven works. Me. We'll plan on the seventh. Just have her send us an email to remind okay. us all. Yeah. One seven. Be here at ten thirty in the morning. Yeah. Send an email to remind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I won't be there. I'm gonna phone call. Yeah. And we so. have to dress conservatively. Professionally. <laughs> all right. So that's the date. So you, now we have a. Motion to go in a, you want a motion to go in a non-public under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon <laughs> three Roman two small e litigation only. I'll also move. Move second. second. All those in favor? I need a roll call. Aye. 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 Those unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>